The New Estate Baptist Church Media presents The Living Word of God We believe the message you're about to listen to Will touch your spirit and soul Have a life-changing fellowship with the Lord Through the power of His Word May His glory shine through you forever succeed over our lives even to do such in the name of Jesus. Amen. That as you have promised that you have not asked us to worship you in vain. We ask Lord that this morning our worship will not be in vain. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What you have in your mind, O oh God, we pray that you will accomplish in our lives. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit, we hand over everything unto you, that you will be the one conducting, you will be, you will be the one presiding. Thank you, mighty Father. We worship and we adore you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Please, let's be seated. Praise the Lord. David said, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I believe there are happy people here this morning. Yes. Can we stand on our feet and bless the name of the Lord? Woo. Hallelujah. Come on, jam those hands together for the Lord. The psalmist says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. We want to declare this morning that our help is in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.
foundation. It's a firm foundation on him we can stand secure. Hallelujah.
Lord. Don't stop worshiping him. Give me praise. The Bible says, shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Give him praise. Make his praise glorious. Worship him. He's worthy. He's worthy of all the praise. Don't stop clapping. Don't stop lifting him. Don't stop worshiping him. Don't stop glorifying his name. Magnify the Lord with me and exalt his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His faithfulness never ceases. Father, we lift your name on high. Father, we lift your name on high. All the glory belongs to you, O God. All the glory belongs to you, O God. All the glory belongs to you, O God. There is no other God but you. Father, we worship you this morning. We worship you this morning. We worship you this morning. Who is there like you, O God? Who is there like you, O God? What a privilege. What an honor to be able to approach him. What a privilege to come before your throne, to be called into your presence as your own. Father, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. You came from heaven to earth to show. sit down. We are still singing. Take your bulletin and we sing our hymn. In Christ alone, my hope is built.
one more time. God is awesome. I thought I would hear a witness in the house. Our God is awesome. And that's why we are very glad anytime it comes to the things of the Lord. Our God is wonderful. Our God is an awesome God. And we will continue to sing His praise. Listen at the choir ministers now. Just here to respect, respect in every aspect, that's special guest in the morning. God bless everybody that recognizes us right in the morning. I'm just here to respect, thanking God for everybody. Pastor, please, Pastor, please. No, 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 must here.
Somebody shout hallelujah. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. We give glory to God because he reigns. Our God reigns. Let's stand together. Just celebrate his goodness and mercy. We'd like to celebrate the choir. Put your hands together and just celebrate the choir. Let's celebrate the goodness of God in the life of the choir. Let's celebrate the goodness of the Lord in the life of the choir. That is good music. Amen. All right, we'd like to thank God for our brother Shola. We had to pray. God bless you. Pastor Darry, you don't have, you don't have a problem. Hallelujah. Any problem? You see, the moment you have a younger generation that can do what you are doing, you don't have any problem. The problem of any country is when they cannot produce a younger generation that is even better than themselves. So every man should strive that his own children will be better than himself. So we want to see, we want to thank God for the products that are coming up from the music ministry. So any problem at all, put your hands together for the Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. You know, David went around picking some completely broken people. And over a period of time, he turned them around. And they became great men of valor. Bible says a time came when they said, my friend, sit down here. What you know how to do, we can do better. And they were invaded the camp of the wicked even at the risk of their lives, to go get any water. Amen? This is because he had invested in their lives. The weakness that they were known with left. The inexperience left. The lack of wisdom left. And they became great men of valor. That's what the power of discipleship is. We want to thank God for what God is doing. We pray that we will continue to have a younger generation rising up to do the will of God even as some of us begin to age in Jesus' name. Whether we like it or not, aging is a reality. Uh -huh. So the only thing is that we have to continue to renew strength. And you renew strength by, re by strengthening and preparing the younger generation. May the Lord bless you, Shola. You did a good job. I like that ikukusando. Functions. Amen. Some of you thought I forgot ikukusando, have you? Even some of you have forgotten. I didn't forget. Praise God. Amen. Please pick your Bible, your, your bullets in. Let's quickly run through the prophetic word as we stand. O labo shakata. I want you to prophesy this word to your brother, to yourself, to your brother, to your sister around you. Because it's the word of God prophetic word for the week. Are you ready? It's taken from Psalm number 4 verse 3. Psalm number 4 verse 3. One to go. The Lord will show you special favor. He will respond when you cry out to him. Do you believe that word? If you believe it, then say it to that person like you mean it. Amen. Let's go again. Special favor. He will respond when you cry out to him. Amen. Amen. Look at a third person, a next person, a different person from the one you just spoke to and speak that word to that person. Go ahead. One, two, go. Amen. Now you're third person now. Third person, third person. Mm. Amen. Let's shout a big amen in the house. Everybody lift up your right hand and say that prayer. Go ahead. Go ahead. The Lord will show me special favor. He will respond when I cry out to him. Amen. If you believe that, just say, oh Lord, this week, as I move into it, show me special favor. Respond to me when I cry out to you. Go ahead and pray that prayer. It's a prayer. It's a prayer. It's a prayer. 
I'd like to hear all of you talk to God this morning. Say, God, as I march out this week, today is the first day of the week. I don't know what the week holds, but I know the one that knows the, ancient, the, the beginning from the end, the ancient of days, the Alpha, the Omega. I know him. He is my God, and because he is my God, I put my trust in him. I'm believing him for a special favor, a special favor this week. Lord, I'm believing you for a special favor. I want to open your mouth and cry out to God for a special favor. Remember the word of God says special, special favor. It means there is favor and there is special favor. This week you are built for a special favor. This week you have been ident identified for a special favor. This week, you are, have been designated for a special favor. Favor from God, a special favor. You have been mapped out for a special favor this week. Can you say, God, wherever I go this week, wherever I go this week, wherever I go this week, I receive a special favor in the name of Jesus. Can you pray, God, when I cry out to you, respond. Please don't ignore my cry. The Bible says the, the, the humble and the contrite heart, he will not ignore. He will not ignore the humble and the contrite heart. So pray, God, do not ignore me when I cry to you. Respond to my cry concerning whatever matter that I bring before you today. Do I bring before you this week in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I don't want you to consume that prayer all to yourself. I'd like you to pray that prayer to some, for somebody and say, may the Lord this week, may the Lord show you a special favor. Go ahead, pray for that prayer. Brother, brother, that sister. Don't consume that prayer all to yourself. Pray for the person. Say, may the Lord show you special favor. This week, may you come back with something tangible that you can show as a result of special favor. May special favor attend to you. In your marketplace, may special favor attend to you. In your work, may you experience special favor. In your family, may you experience special favor. Yes, everywhere you go this week, may you experience special favor. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Look at the latter part of that prayer, of that prophetic word. He said, what? May the, he said, the Lord will respond when I cry out to him. Do you believe that? And I want you to just acknowledge it again. Oh Lord, you will respond to me speedily when I cry out to you. Go ahead and acknowledge it. Say it. Affirm it. I want you to affirm it. I want you to affirm it and receive it. I want you to affirm it because we are going somewhere. We are just going to, we are going somewhere from there. We are going somewhere from there. We are going somewhere from there. Lord, when I cry out to you, hear me. When I cry out to you, respond. Do not ignore my prayer. Lord, when I cry out to you, respond. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Now move on. I give you five minutes. In this service, five minutes. You have said, when I cry out to you, Lord, do what? Respond. Is there a matter? Any matter? You can't come to God in prayer and walk away from his presence. There must be something you, have, you will tell God. Anything. And you have said, God, listen, respond when I cry out to you. So this is your time. Five minutes. From now to the next five minutes, just talk to God. Put before him whatever it is. Whatever posture you want to take, go ahead. This is your church. This is your, the sanctuary of the Lord. I have asked God concerning this altar that it will be an altar of answers, an altar of solutions, an, also, an, answer, an altar for breakthrough. This is the place of God's presence. The whole of this sanctuary is God's altar. Before you, before you came, the Spirit of God was here even before you to meet with you. So in the next five minutes, please, don't leave your business to continue to struggle. You can bring it to God and God will give you breakthrough in that business. You can't do it all by yourself. 
You can't do it by your strength. You can't do it by your knowledge. You have tried it. Nothing, is, nothing seems to be working. Your wisdom is failing. Your know-how is failing. Your connections are not providing you results. I don't know what you would think, but I know that God can handle it. So go ahead, present something to God. The, he said what? The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Can somebody change his playing field this morning by prayer? Can you change your story this morning by prayer? Can you change your situation this morning by prayer? Can you change your experience this morning at the place of prayer? Can you change your trouble? Can you uh, lay down your troubles at the place of prayer? Can you exchange your sickness for health at the place of prayer? Can you exchange your defeat for victory at the place of prayer can you exchange your complaint to testimony at the place of prayer can you change your location from the place of complaint to the place of testimony can you change your location from the place of waiting from the waiting list to the testimony list can you change your location from the waiting list onto the testimony list this is your time this is your time make use of it this is your time. Make use of it. Can you change your playing field? Can you change your playing field? Can you change your playing field? Can you ask God, put me ahead of my enemies? Put me ahead of my enemies? Put me ahead of those who are contending with me? Oh God, can you put me ahead of my competitors? Lord, can you put me ahead of my competitors? Because I bear your name, I'm your representative. Can you give me a divine advantage? Lord, can you place me ahead? Can you place me ahead? Church, I came to tell you that Elijah ran ahead of Ahab. I want you to say, God, in the name of Jesus, place me ahead. Elijah ran ahead of Ahab up to the up to Jezreel. Elijah ran up to Jezreel ahead of Ahab, his competitor. Ahead of Ahab, even his enemy. I want you to pray, God, give me divine advantage. Place me ahead this week, the rest of this month, the rest of this year. Lord. Lord, put, I put this before you. Come on, don't go away from here this morning without putting before the Lord something. You still have three minutes. You still have three minutes. Go ahead. I don't want you to quit praying. I don't want you to quit praying. You can change your playing field. You can change your testimony. If people cannot change their testimony in New Estate, I don't know where else to change it. Because here, it is prayer and the word. Two things govern this church. Two things run this church. Prayer and the word. Two things are prominent in this ministry. Prayer and the word. I'd like you to begin to pray and say, God, we, I, I put this before you. Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. You can change your situation. You can change your story. You can change your life. You can change your playing field. You can change what has been happening to you. You can change your environment. You can change your experiences. You can change what's going on with you. You can change it. You can break your limitations. Can you pray and break limitations? You can break boundaries. Can you pray and break boundaries? If there is anyone sick in this house, please take advantage of this atmosphere. Receive divine healing. You can change your health situation. You can change your health situation. Jesus Christ bore your infirmities. He took your diseases upon himself. And by his stripes you are healed. So take advantage of this atmosphere and change your situation. If there is anyone that is in this house, you are oppressed, attacked by the devil. Your experiences are terrible, funny. Can you pray and say, today, I, took, I take advantage of this atmosphere and I demand for liberation. I demand for liberty. I demand for help. I demand for God's divine touch to end my misery, to end my, my pain, to end my attack, to end my bitter experiences. Is there anybody whose waters are like Mara? Is there any water whose waters are the waters of Meribah? They are bitter. Are you here? You have been drinking the waters of bitterness. Uh -uh. I want you to say today, I'll drink sweet waters. The Holy Ghost comes upon your life and your waters will receive a healing and you will begin to drink sweet waters. Are you having experiences that you can compare to experiences of Job? I'd like you to begin to pray. I said, God, arise to my help. Lord, arise to my help. Oh God, 
Lord, arise to my help. Oh Lord, arise to my help. We began this service by confessing that our help is in the name of the Lord. We began this service by confessing that our help is in the name of the Lord. Can you say, God, arise to my help. Arise to my help. Lord, arise to my help. In our company, Lord, things have not been going well. Arise to my help. The job they gave to me, things are not working. Arise to my help. I'm about to be disgraced. Arise to my help. I'm about to lose my job. Arise to my help. I'm about to be thrown out. Arise to my help. Lord, the business is about to crumble. Arise to my help. All the debtors are not paying. Arise to my help. People I trusted are disappointing me. Lord, arise to my help. Yeah, God, arise to my help. If you don't know, rescue me. I'll be put to shame. But the Bible says that those who put their trust in you, they shall be like Mount Zion. They shall not be put to shame. Oh God, arise to my help that I may not suffer shame, that I may not suffer disgrace. Oh God, arise to my help. Can somebody cry this morning? This is what we came to do. I want you to pray, God, arise to my help. Put before the Lord something. Don't walk away from this service because this is a service of change. It is a service of change. It is a service of change. The Lord is changing your situation. The Lord is changing your story. The Lord is changing your situation. The Lord is changing your story. I don't know what you came about here with. I don't know how much burden you bear. I don't know how much burden you bear. But I heard the, Bible, the word of God say how much burden we bear, which, which we shouldn't bear. Oh, we ought to carry it unto the Lord. Can you bear it to the Lord this morning? Tell the Lord something. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. We finished the five minutes, but you can take two other minutes. We have finished the five minutes, but take two others. We have finished the five minutes, take two others. But please, I don't want you to waste it. Oh my God, please don't waste it. Can you please wait? Don't waste it. There is an atmosphere created in the house. This house has been, has been made ready for God to do something. This house has been made ready for God to do something this morning. There is a move of the Spirit of God. And the move is not for nothing. There was a day Jesus Christ came. He came into a house. And the Bible says, And the Spirit of God was upon him to heal. There is a specific time for a particular move of God. This morning, the waters are being stirred. That man was waiting for the stirring of the waters by the waters of Bethesda. Every time the angel came, he stirred the water. And healing power was released upon the water. Whoever came into the water, they were healed, whatever the name of the disease. This morning, the waters are, are steered by the hand of God. The waters are steered by the hand of God. So take advantage of the waters that have been steered. Enter into them and receive your healing. Let the issues of your life be addressed. Don't stand here quietly and be looking piously because you will walk away the same as you came. You will go home empty-handed and it's not the will of God. It's not the will of God for you to come here and go away empty-handed and go away the same as you came. God can give you a testimony. God can give you a change of situations. God can give you a change of story. I came to a meeting like this and my life got affected. I was in a meeting like this and my life was touched and my situations changed and I, my testimony became different. I, I never re remained the same. I am at a different pedestal. When I entered into that meeting, something happened to me. I want that thing to happen to you even as we come to this service this morning. It, it happens in the presence of God. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. In the presence of God, there is power. In the presence of God, there is an anointing that changes your story and gives you a new playing field so that your life is a testimony. Somebody cry out to God. Tell him something. Put anything before the Lord. Put anything before the Lord. Put anything before the Lord. Ask, it shall be given to you. Seek, you will find. Knock, you, the door shall be opened unto you. Ah, ask, you will ask, you will receive. Seek, you will find. Ask, you will receive. Seek, you will find. Knock, the door shall be opened to you. I'm awaiting your testimony. Heaven is awaiting your testimony. These brethren here are awaiting your testimony because I'm too sure that you have contacted something this morning. I'm too sure you have contacted something this morning. I'm very, very sure you have contacted something this morning because he never comes when he doesn't want to do anything. He never comes around when he's not ready to do anything. I'm too sure you have contacted something this morning and that thing will do you good. It will translate you. 
change you, transform you, bless you, and cause you to sing for joy because this is the work of the Lord. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. Can you celebrate him with thanksgiving? Just go ahead and give him thanks. 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 Go ahead, 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 give him thanks. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to come. Take you to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you because your people have come to you, bringing before you several issues, burdens, challenges, troubles, trials, temptations, and difficulties. Father, O oh God, they have brought all kinds of prayers before you. But there is a word that you have given to us in Psalm 4, verse 3. You said you will respond when we cry out unto you. O oh Lord, our Father, I pray that you will respond to the cry of your people. Grant the desires of their hearts minister to the areas of their needs change their situations change their stories give them a new playing field and cause them oh god to see the mighty work of god in their lives let them return to this place with testimonies in the mighty name of jesus every burden upon your neck today by the power of god let it be taken away every yoke you have borne before now may it be destroyed in the mighty name of jesus christ every dilemma the lord brings you out of it every confusion the lord brings you out of it every every darkness you are out of that darkness the light of god shines in your heart divine direction is your portion in the name of jesus every lack the lord is supplying your needs you will not be hungry i come against scarcity in the name of jesus the lord shall put substance in your hands you will be made rich and give to other people in the mighty name of Jesus, all tears upon your eyes, the Lord wipe them away today. In the mighty name of Jesus, every affliction you suffer, I put an end to it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, every attack by night, I put an end to it right now. In the name of Jesus, every attack by day, I put an end to it right now. In the name of Jesus, attack on your finances, I put an end to it right now. In the name of Jesus, attack on your business, I put an end to it right now. In the name of Jesus, attack on your family, I put an end to it right now. In the name of Jesus, attack on your well-being, I put an end to it right now. In the name of Jesus. 
Jesus. Attack on your health. I put an end to it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Fear in your heart. I come against it right now. In the name of Jesus. Apprehension and anxiety. I put an end to them right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Confusion and fighting. Quarrels and misunderstandings. Ah, with other people around you. I put an end to that. In the name of Jesus Christ. I put an end to your suspension. In the name of Jesus. Today the Lord gives you a breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. You will no more be on the waiting list. You are on the testimony list. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Christ. The Lord rises up for you in strength and power in the name of Jesus. When the wicked rise up to eat up your flesh, they will stumble and fall in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you will prosper and every tongue that rises against you in judgment is condemned. You will walk, you will not be afraid. None shall make you afraid. You will lie down and great shall be your peace. The Lord shall satisfy your days with good things in the name of Jesus Christ. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil for the Lord shall be with you the lord shall sustain you the lord shall keep you the lord shall protect you he will fight your battles you will hold your peace and see the salvation of the lord the egyptians that pursued you before now they will pursue you no more they will turn their back on you and run away from you for they will know that the lord is fighting your battle and they will not be able to fight against you their chariots will lose their tires and their wheels will leave them and they will be drawn in the waters of the red sea in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus every spiritual power that was working against you orchestrating your pain your misery your attack your anguish your, your sorrow today I stand by the authority of the name of Jesus I condemn that spiritual power I take authority over that spiritual power I bind that spiritual force and I condemn their yoke on your life in the name of Jesus you Satan I rebuke you in the name of the Lord I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. Concerning these people, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. Touch not the anointed of the Lord. And do the people of God no harm in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of death, I take authority over you. You will not prosper. Agents of wickedness, agents of death, agents of attack, agents of pain, agents of misery. Today, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I release the power of God upon God's people to overcome in the name of Jesus. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. He who is born of God overcometh the world. Friends, you are born of God. And because of that, you overcome the world. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You will have no reason to be afraid. For the Lord has gone ahead of you. He's gone ahead of you into this year. He has gone ahead of you into this month. He's gone ahead of you into your future. In the name of Jesus Christ. Though you don't know your future, but you know the one that is the ancient of days. Who knows the end before the beginning. Therefore your hand is in your hands. You put your feet in his feet. And grace shall be your peace. In the name of Jesus. Every turbulent wind blowing against your life. Today I say peace be still. In the name of Jesus, every water where you are about to, to drown, I call on the Messiah, the Deliverer, to pull you out. You are coming out of that water in the name of Jesus. Every slimy pit where your feet have entered. Today, I say you are coming out. 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 In the name of Jesus, I pull you out of the mighty clay. In the name of Jesus, I pull you out of the mighty clay today. In the name of Jesus, I put your feet upon a rock today. You are standing. You are not falling. In the name of Jesus, the ears of men will tingle. When they hear the testimony of your deliverance and of your redemption and of your salvation and of your escape from the snares of the fowler. In the name of Jesus. Your testimony shall be, come, taste and see that the Lord is good. That shall be your everlasting testimony. In the name of Jesus. Whatever becomes of the year. You are overcomers. The Lord position you for overcoming. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba Father. We celebrate your greatness. We celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your kindness. We celebrate your favor. We celebrate your provision. We shall not lack. The Lord shall supply all our needs according to his abundant riches and glory. Great shall be our peace. 
in the name of Jesus. Great is your peace. It is great is the peace of your children. Wherever they are, within the country, outside the country, I speak the peace of God right to their chest. In the name of Jesus Christ, no bad news will hit your ear. Concerning your children, no bad news will hit your ear. I say no bad news will hit your ear. Concerning your children, no bad news will hit your ear. In the name of Jesus, though you may be here in Nigeria, the Lord will spread his wings around them and no evil shall touch them. Though you are here in Lagos, they are somewhere outside Lagos, the Lord will spread his wings around them. He shall watch over them in the name of Jesus. He will put his canopies round about them in the name of Jesus. No sickness will befall them. If there be any sickness, they will recover. I separate every one of them from infirmity. This is not of God. Every infirmity upon their lives is not of God. Therefore, because it's not of God, I command it to disappear. In the name of Jesus. Everyone whose child, daughter, son, sick in the hospital, I mean, sick in the hostel, wherever, I, um, I command today, they will not call for you. They will not call for you. They will not call for you. Jesus goes ahead and touches them. They are healed in the name of Jesus. They will continue their class work. No need for you to go there. In the name of Jesus Christ, God will say thank you. Oh, we give you glory. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Say louder, amen. amen. Say covenant, amen. amen. Say wonderful, amen. amen. Say a gram of, of agreement. Amen of agreement. Amen of agreement. Amen of agreement. Amen of agreement. If you are in the house, say a big amen. amen. God bless you, real good church. Take your seat. Take your Bible, open to the book of First Chronicles chapter 16. I'd like to read verse 11. I'd like us to read it together. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. First Chronicles 16, verse 11. Are you there? Somebody talk to me. Are you there? I'm not going to preach this morning. I've done what the Spirit of God wants me to do. But I'm going to call your attention to something you need very, very seriously before we move to the table to have communion. Seek, are you there? First Chronicles 16, 11. I want us to read it together, whatever version you are carrying. Are you there? One, two, go. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Is that a suggestion or a command? It's a command of God. Amen. He said what? Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek the Lord is prayer. Seek the Lord is what? It's a call to prayer. You seek the Lord in the place of prayer. Seek the Lord and seek his strength. Then he will say what? Seek his face continually. Please take note of a few things in that scripture. Number one, that you should seek the Lord. It is the Lord himself that is asking you to seek him. That means that the Lord has made himself available. Is somebody here? God is saying, I'm available. I am available. So therefore, you should do what? Seek me. And there is a promise all over scriptures. It says, if you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me diligently with all your heart. That is in the Old Testament, the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 29 from verse 12. Then if you jump to the New Testament, you still see the same emphasis. In the book of Matthew 11, chapter 7, verse 7, ask you will, you will find, and ask you will receive. He said, seek, you will find. If you move to the book of Luke, you will still see the same thing. He said, in Luke 11 from verse 13, he said, if you know how to good, give good gifts to your children, how much more will the father give good gifts to them that do what? That ask of him, seeking the Lord. Seek, you will find. So if you seek the Lord, there is a standing promise that you will find him. Why? Because he has made himself available. I entered into access bank I think it's a, it's a kind of uh, training that they give to the, the, the people at the, on the, at the counter. You enter into the, into the, into the uh, access bank. The, 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 the first time I heard it, I was like, ah. Then I, I heard it again, then I heard it again. When each uh, cashier had finished with a client he's dealing with, or a customer that he was dealing with, the next thing you heard was, I'm available to serve. Then whoever is next will move there. The next thing you hear from the other cashier, I'm available to serve. I don't know if you have heard that. I entered into Access Bank. That's where I heard that. I'm, I'm available to serve. 
I'm available to serve. Then you march there, she serves you. This morning, I came to tell you that the Lord is available to serve. He wants to serve your interest. He wants to serve for your well-being. He wants to serve for your peace. He wants to serve to help you. He wants to serve to lift you up. He wants to serve to give you strength. He, therefore, he's just saying what? Make come and take advantage because I'm available to serve. So God says, seek me. The second one, he said, seek his strength. Now, that's exactly the key of, our, of the, the matter today that we, 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 we have in mind to look at. Seek his strength. Seek the Lord and his strength. Now, this year, we have declared the year a year of divine acceleration. All right? The Bible tells us how Ahab ran. I mean, sorry. J, uh, 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 Elijah ran and ran ahead of, uh, of Ahab down to Jezreel. And we took time to look at the distance that was to be covered. And the man was, right, was running on his uh, feet while Ahab was on, a, on the best chariots in town. The best and the, 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 the fastest chariots that you, that you can talk about. The strongest that you can talk about. The most expensive because he was the king. But the Bible says that, Ahab, that J uh, Elijah ran ahead of him. He ran because of what? Because of the anointing of God. If you look at that scripture, it says the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah. One of the things that the hand of the Lord does is to give a man an unusual strength. So Elijah was running in an unusual strength. He was running by, the, by an unusual power. There was energy that, that ordinary flesh cannot offer. There was strength in the inside of him that was stronger, that was more than that of the horses that dragged the chariots of Ahab. Energy coming from heaven directly, that was not that of a man. That's why in the strength of the Lord, he ran ahead. I say to you, if you run this whole year in the strength of the Lord, you will always run ahead. The strength of the Lord places you ahead. I am therefore asking that this year you will wait on the Lord and receive his strength. For those who wait upon the Lord shall do what? Renew strength. So there is a provision for a renewed strength and it is in the waiting on the Lord. I want to ask all of us today as a church that we should imbibe the grace that has been made available in the place of prayer and receive strength because there is strength. Strength to see you through all kinds of challenges that will come on your way. Strength to see you through all kinds of troubles that may come at your workplace. Strength to see you through all kinds of pressure that you may suffer at the family level. All kinds of I mean, strength to see you through all kinds of problems that you may meet, that may meet you. All kinds of allegations and accusations. Strength of character to still stand and stand through and never get distracted and never get halted and push on in spite of it all until you get to the place. There is that strength in God. So please Please don't struggle as if there is no provision. Don't continue to struggle as if you have not been, as if there is no help. I came to announce to you and to remind you that there is help in God and that help is of strength to move on. I don't see any of you stopped by anything this year. I don't see any one of you being stopped by anything this year because I don't see anything that is stronger than the strength of God. In the strength of God you will beat all your defense, all the defenses, all the obstacles, you will cross all the rivers and mount up all the mountains and fill up all the valleys and run up in the strength of the Lord until you get to your Jezreel. We talked about goals. You cannot run your goals except there is what? There is strength to pursue them because sometimes circumstances can rise up that you will see as if none of your goals can come to pass. You will be discouraged and totally, you know, uh, battered in the inside. But when you get back inside and say what? There is strength in God and the Bible says I should wait upon him and I shall renew that strength. And you tarry with God and tarry with God a new strength is released. He said, seek the strength of the Lord because there is strength in him. Amen. You cannot run this year successfully without the strength of God. So, please don't compromise. If there is anything to compromise on, don't compromise on strength. And how do you tap the strength of God? How do you tap the strength of God? It's in that scripture. He said what? Seek the Lord and seek his strength. How do you tap the strength of God? You tap the strength of God by prayer. You tap the, the strength of God by what? By praying. 
So all through the year, I call on all of you, please keep your prayer altar on fire. Keep your prayer altar on fire. The body may be resisting it. Don't listen to the body. Don't mind the body. The body is a, it wa- does not want you to get to where God wants you to get to. I want you to ignore the body. Ignore whatever you feel in your body and do what? Tap on the provision that has been made. Pray, pray, pray. No wonder Jesus Christ will say unto James and Peter and John, after he had brought them to Gethsemane, he said unto them, watch and do what? And pray. Huh? that you do not fall into temptation. I, w- I like the latter part. He said what? For the, sp- for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There is a weakness in this thing. There is a weakness. It will not allow you to run the way you should run. You need a desire to fly. It can't allow you. There is a weakness in this. But there is something that has been provided to deal with the weakness of this thing. And what is that thing? The strength of the Lord. And how do you tap in it? Jesus brought them to the place where they would do what? They would tap from that strength and defeat the demands of this flesh and its limitations and its weakness and go beyond it and do great exploits. You are not an extra. You don't do anything extra except if you connect to the extraordinary then you do extraordinary things but unfortunately in the place where they should be praying they were sleeping i pray this day you will not sleep you will not sleep in your prayer life you will not sleep you will not sleep you will not sleep in your prayer life in the morning pray oh in the morning pray in the afternoon pray in the evening pray uh, Paul wrote to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Paul wrote to Timothy, he said what? I will, I desire that all men will pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands. I desire that all men, all, all, not some men, all men will pray. If you look at the scripture that is in our bulletin, he said what? In the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 to 20. He was talking about what? Strength. He first of all began by, in verse 10 by saying, be strong in the Lord. And he downloaded how to be strong. One of the things he mentioned in verse 18 is what? Praying always. If you want to be strong, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Praying always. If you want to be strong, pray always. If you want to pray to be strong, pray always. I'm not saying you should pray sometimes. Don't pray when you have challenges. Don't pray when you have problems. Don't pray only all at that time or only on those, on those occasions. Pray always. First Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. Hey, Luke 18.1, men ought always to pray and not to faint. That's how to tap the strength of the Almighty. That's how to tap the strength of the Almighty God. I like Jude verse 20. Jude verse 20 says what? He said, build yourself up, build yourself up, build yourself up in your most holy faith. Doing what? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Build yourself up, build yourself up. Jude verse 20. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. By what? Praying in the Holy Ghost. So when you wake up and the Spirit of God helps you, prompts you to pray, just pray. Even when you don't understand what the Spirit of God is saying, listen to me. He that prayed in an unknown tongue, prayed not unto men, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Albeit in the Spirit, he speaketh mysteries. That's a, a First Corinthians 14.2. First Corinthians 14 2. He that prayed in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God, how bit in the spirit, what does he do? He speaketh mysteries. If you so, when you release your spirit and your spirit helps you and your spirit prays, he's speaking things that ordinary mouth cannot say, ordinary sense cannot understand and comprehend. No wonder the Bible says also in the book of Romans, chapter 8, if you check verse 26, 27, he says what? We do not know how to pray as we ought to, but the Holy Spirit does what? Make it intercessions for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Ah, I like that scripture. In, in, in verse 27 of it, he said, the Holy Spirit helpeth our infirmities. Infirmity there is what? Weakness. I just told you that this thing is laden with what? With weakness. There are too many things I desire. Amos, I desire so many things. There are some things buried in my spirit. But this cage is limiting me. This cage is weak. Sometimes I want to wake up by 3 a.m. I have desired, I want to pray. By 3 a.m., that's the time when my body will be weakest and the sleep will be sweetest. I turn around, I look at the clock. I say, okay, in the next 10 minutes. I turn around again, 20 minutes has passed. Okay, in the next five minutes, I turn around again. Ah, 30 minutes has passed. 
Before, before you know it, from three, it moves to four. From four, it moves to five. If you don't do anything about it, it will be good morning. What is it? It's a manifestation of the flesh. I like Paul. That's why Paul came to the point of frustration. He said what? Oh God, the good things I want to do, I'm unable to do them. And the bad things I hate to do are the things my body continually, repeatedly does. Oh wretched man that I am. In this thing you are wretched. But thank God, the story didn't end there. He pushed on to say thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. The moment Jesus is introduced into a matter, the story changes. Amen. Amen. I want to appeal with you. Please pray. Somebody said, show me a strong church and I will show you a praying church. Show me a praying church and I will show you a strong church. Show me a praying Christian. I will show you a victorious Christian. Show me a praying believer and I'll show you a, a bulldozer against the kingdom of darkness. Show me a praying Christian. I'll show you an unstoppable Christian. I want to ask that God will help us that we will become a praying church. Hello. 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 That will be what? A praying church. I like Jesus. He said what? He was talking, he was talking in the synagogue, in the temple. He said, do you not know that it has been appointed that this house shall become what? A house of prayer. How is it that you people turned it into a den of robbers? What was it appointed to be? It was appointed to be a house of prayer. Because in prayer, we, we tap in the strength of God. I want to say, please, don't depend on your intellect to run this year. Don't depend on your ability to run this year. Don't depend on your, on your connections to run this year. You won't run with speed. But if you receive strength from the Lord, then you will run with master speed, unusual speed, uncommon speed, and you will deliver with uncommon delivery, with uncommon excellence. Because of what? The strength is in the Lord. I saw a scripture and it pricked my heart. And that is what? The scripture that I read sometime one or two weeks ago when Caleb was talking to Joshua. He said, Joshua, I am 85 years right now, but I'm feeling as still as strong as though I was what? 40 years. I am as strong right now as I was when I was 40 years. What was running the life of that old man? It was the strength of the Lord, not the strength of physical energy. No wonder at 85, he still said what? Don't think I've forgotten. You. There is a gift of God that I have not yet received. There is a possession I have not yet taken. And I'm not going to the grave until I have taken it. Why? I have the strength to give, do it. Give me my Hebron. The man was talking about the strength of the Lord. He was boasting on the strength of the Lord. My prayer is that, you will help, that God will help you to pray. I have a confession as I round off. I have a confession and I and and I'm, I'm, I'm make this confession with sincere sense of responsibility. You know, two times now. One time in, the, in January and, and this second time this, this week, I was, uh, I, I was in two different places, two different very strategic uh, uh, meetings. Uh -huh. And then, first time God probed me and I felt guilty about that probe. I've been thinking about it. But this last week again, I was in another meeting. And God probed me again concerning that, that meeting. Concerning that matter. And what was the matter? And that's why I said I have, I have a confession this morning. And that confession is what? This year, as we turned into the year, we have always prayed three days as we entered into the year every year. This year, I, I arranged the calendar and I said, we're going to do one, one day every month. One day every month. One day every month. What? You know? Did you consult with God? Did you see that what you say? I must confess, I considered, I wanted, it was like, ah, you've been doing this thing. It's becoming like a routine. And that uh, it looks like as if you are putting a burden upon the people. Can you ease up this burden a little for them? But they are not your people. They are God's people. Twice the Lord probed me. This last one on Thursday, no, on Wednesday at a meeting in Obinze. Where? A very serious meeting. I was crying and confessing. I said, God, I'm sorry. Please, I'm sorry to say to you, we are returning to three days prayer. Straight away. Three days. Three days. We're going to have 
first three days of the week of the, of the month we are praying on Wednesday we are praying it's been there whether you follow it or not it has been there nobody has removed it and I don't remove it oh. Wednesday is our day set aside as a church for prayer and fasting per week he said if you if you live if you live if you, if you are pitying them will you pity them when the troubles begin to come are you pitying them when you are pitying them and you feel that you are, you are burdening them burden them to be okay if they will be burdened so that they can feel, they can be fine then they reduce your prayer wahala. They will reduce the phone calls at night. Because prayer changes things. I'm sorry to say, we are returning to prayer first three days of every month. I cannot joke with the things of God. Oh, Mimo. Yes, Mimo. I cannot. I cannot joke with the things of God. I cannot joke. I'm sorry, church. I cannot joke with the things of God. I can't toy with the things of God. Not for my convenience. And not for the convenience of any other. Except for the convenience of Almighty God. If it is not for his pleasure, if it is not for his convenience, there's no job doing. There is nothing going on there. I call on every one of you. Please join on Wednesdays and pray. It doesn't kill. Pray. Just suspend that day. Just keep that day as the day of no food. That's the one day that New Estate prays with prayer and fasting. Whether we end up here by praying together or not, that day, set it aside. Set it aside. Learn to start from there. Some of us don't have any day of fasting the whole week. You eat the whole week. You whole, eat the whole month. Ah, Your mouth cannot close at all except in the night. If some of you had a way, you will eat in the night. No wonder the devil comes to feed you in your dream. Because you are used to chop, 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 chop. Everything that passes, bring it. Everything that passes, you chop. Your mouth cannot rest. Just one day of prayer. Ah. If you come here in the evening and see, that's what people will be doing. I still want to die. You will not die. It's a lie of the devil. He knows that there is strength in what you are doing. Hello? There is strength in what you are doing. So develop this personal discipline. I have confessed it that this last Wednesday, I knelt down. I was crying on the altar. I was crying. They made altar call. I came out. I'm sure that some people will be surprised. Ah, hey, oh, pastor, I was on program. Hey, oh, pastor, come out. Came out. Yes, I came out. I know the shame. When you do, when you know that you are, you are not, you didn't do right. If you hide it, Bible says, whoever hides his iniquity shall what? Shall not prosper. But he whoever confesses it eh, and, and turns away from it shall what? shall have mercy. Mercy has come to me because I've confessed today. Not in the open. I confess that day personally. I'm confessing here in the open and I receive the mercy of God. Can I have an amen? amen? I want to ask you to please join to pray. This church must be prayed. This church must be on her, on her feet to pray. There are too many reasons why you must continue to pray. If not for anything, it is in scripture injunction. We just read here in First Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 16 verse 11 that you should do what? Seek the Lord and his strength and seek his face. How? Continually. No only day. Help me tell your neighbor you turn to prayer. Whatever I did, I did, in, I, I, I did as a concession, but the Lord says, mm -mm, that concession is not, it's not okay. Every first, second, and third day of the month, let's return to the place Let's wait on the Lord. We we'll join hands together. Come back here for one hour. We pray. On Wednesdays, we wait on the Lord. We break at 5.30. Come for midweek service. If, we, if, in the, if, 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 if in the course of the service, the Lord leads the person leading to give us some 15 minutes of prayer together, beautiful. But we'll have waited upon the Lord up to 5.30 and broken before we come for midweek service. That's what we do. And every week, you see, you, we, you see various groups that have been kept apart for each day. To pray for this church and to pray for themselves. I want everybody to wake up and do it. Wake up and do it and you see the result. Woe unto any man if he doesn't have dealings with God. Woe unto any man if he does not have what? Personal dealings with God. And when he tells you to, to do anything, whatever he tells you to do, whatever he tells you to do, so we are going to trust God that he will give us strength. This year, we will run in God's own strength.
you will not be weak. You will not be weary. You will not be tired. Because there is grace in the house. And that grace will sustain you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to be speaking on, on uh, 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 prayer, a matter of grace. Prayer, a matter of grace. I'll be sharing about sharing uh, uh, that subject, you know, two Sundays away. Uh, at, our next, at the next time I'm up here, I'll be sharing that with you. Prayer, a matter of grace. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We worship you. I ask, oh God, that you help us to pray. This morning we have prayed. We have brought issues concerning our lives before you because we have no other place to go but to come to you. And I ask eternal God that everyone who has come, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ that Lord, a new strength be given to us to pray. A new desire to pray. A new hunger to pray. Father, grant it unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. God, thank you. I give you the glory. Blessed be your holy name. Everybody say with me, oh Lord, I receive your strength to pray and pray earnestly and pray unto results, mighty signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I receive fresh grace, fresh power, fresh strength to pray. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say a good amen. amen. Let the church say a better amen. amen. Let's go to the table and have communion.
where we are going to have it is there in your bulletin so please uh, those of us around that please let's come let's invite invite our friends the choir will be there together with all our orchestra uh, we we'll carry our equipment there we'll be singing just singing hymns singing 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 so we invite uh, every one of us uh, you can even uh, take permission from your own fellowship leader to come and join us this evening. And when your own time comes, so others will come and join you too. So please, let's come together. So we'll be starting by 5.30, and it will last one and a half hours. God bless you as you come. And also on Wednesday, so we have our first uh, priest night, and we are prepared. So please, let's come. So it's just going to be dancing, dancing. That one we have a one in a one hour, fifteen minutes, just praising God, dancing, dancing, uh, in the presence of the Lord. So please let's come together. It's on Wednesday here in this place. The Lord bless you as you come. Let's rise as we sing together now. Heaven came down, hymn number four three eight, and then we'll be giving our benevolence offerings as we sing together. Let's go together. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender compassion expressed. He made the need of my heart. Shadow displayed. Since we washed away, and my life was saved today. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. 
coming on Wednesday, please bring somebody. Hallelujah. We'd like to thank you again to all this wonderful service we've had together. We trust God that you will continue to bring your friends as we do worship together from Sunday to Sunday. Worshiping with us this morning is uh, Pastor Bello Suleiman. We want to thank God for visiting with us today. Pastor Ben Losleiman is from Kaduna. The Lord bless you. You're welcome in Jesus' name. He's the pastor of Spirit Field Baptist Church in Kaduna. We want to thank God for God granting him genesis to share times with us during the week. You're welcome. I'd like to also identify if there are other visitors that came when we had finished identifying our guests. Please, will you just wave and let me know where you are. If there are any guests that came when we had finished, thank you. Please, can you come? We'd like the, for you to follow the ushers as they take you to the visitors palace for, follow for us to interact with you some more. Let's put our hands together and celebrate them. Thank you so much for coming. thank God for their lives. We thank God for their lives. Any other visitors worshiping with us for the first time or after a long time? All right. Thank you so much. I'm sure you've had a good service today with us. We appreciate your coming and we trust God that you will find time to come again to fellowship with us. The Lord God Almighty be with you in the name of Jesus. Last Sunday when we finished service, uh, as I got to the office, the visitor's parlor, or the, the uh, 
This transfer ministry brought a, a lady, a woman, who was frantically determined that she wanted to see the pastor. So when she came, her, st her story was that uh, almost since we started the Sound of Jubilee uh, administration on radio, she is a seriously committed person to that program. She doesn't miss it any Sunday. So she said, after she listened to the last episode, she said, I want to go and find out that church. Because we always send out the address, or we, we tell the address, she was able to locate this place all the way from Ikbaja. She came to worship here. And she determined that she would not just go until she sees the pastor. That I want to see the face of the person whose voice I've been hearing every Sunday. And she said she was tremendously blessed. She's not a Baptist. She watches in another church, but she felt that she needed to identify with the ministry for blessing her every Sunday. And that's just one testimony out of many. We received them by text messages and others. So let's continue to do the work of the Lord. It's a blessing to the whole world. We are presenting Christ to the whole world. God bless you as you support our ministry both within and without. In Jesus' name. You are very much welcome. The Lord bless you. Let me emphasize again the victory night. Please do come on Saturday, on Friday, 10 o'clock. We're encouraged to be here. We just talked about prayer. You can never be strong and run this race with strength except if you tap into the force of prayer. We encourage you to please come. Let's spend those seven hours together with the Lord in prayer and God will do something very important in our lives. Finally, please don't move from your home fellowship this evening. If you don't belong to the home fellowships that have been identified, don't go visiting. The community hymn singing is going around. It will be your turn. After these people have finished their own, we'll move to another zone. After that, those ones have finished, we'll move to another zone. It will be your turn. We don't want you to leave your home fellowship and say you are going for community hymn singing. Stay at your home fellowship area. It will come to your turn. Amen. We don't want to paralyze the home fellowship activities in other zones because we know you love hymns. You love singing. You will all do Exodus and go to that side. We don't want it to be that way. Please, we encourage you to stay where you are. God bless you real good. Amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. We encourage you to sit in Sunday school and please be a part of the transformed uh, program, discipleship program that we are, going, we are using in Sunday school. Please sit in Sunday school. We encourage you to be a part of Sunday school and learn the word of God together with others. Sunday school is just another one hour from now and all will be over. Sunday school is just another one hour from now. And all Sunday school teachers, please switch on to your Sunday school work and begin right away. God bless you.